Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com and this is Trading Places Live. It is Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021 and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live to air later this morning. Uh, futures currently are up a bit. Uh, we got the Dow Jones Industrial Average up about, uh, one of the futures up about 164 points, which represents almost one half of 1%. The S&P 500 futures up 16 points, NASDAQ futures up 17 points. Actually, uh, NASDAQ trailing a little bit on a relative basis, uh, gaining just about one-tenth of 1% 1 this morning. But it does appear as though futures are pointing to a higher open. We didn't finish very strong yesterday, so I'd like to see the market uh, rebound today. If we break below those lows of yesterday, we could be in for a little bit of short-term weakness. We'll have to kind of follow that as we uh, move along. Uh, let's go through the agenda. Um, so for today, we've got the daily market recap. So I'll go through Monday's action. Talking technically, then we'll get into uh, seasonality, chart lists, uh, earning spotlight, and the three you must see. Before we get into any of that, though, let's uh, go over to earningsbeats.com. If you are new to Earnings Beats, we have a free Earnings Beats Digest newsletter published three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Simply type in your name, email address, hit that subscribe button. It is a free newsletter. There's no credit card required. You can unsubscribe at any time. Also, on Wednesday, uh, I'm going to be providing our earning, or excuse me, our seasonality chart list to any of our and all of our free community. So if you are on that Earnings Beats Digest newsletter, uh, you'll get uh, a copy of our chart list of uh, the top 20 stocks that we're watching for August in terms of seasonality. So these are all stocks that have a history of doing well during the month of August. Um, if you are an extra member or a pro member at Stock Charts, you'll be able to download the chart list right into your account. If you're a basic member at Stock Charts or if you're a non member of Stock Charts, you'll be able to view the chart list. Uh, but you won't be able to download it. Uh, but still, there's only 20 charts, so you should be able to, to view it. I've also annotated a um, support line on each of the 20 charts, just a quick little support area that I'm going to be watching. Uh, if we hit those support levels, knowing that August tends to provide some tailwinds for these stocks, could set up a nice trade. So that, that's the whole idea behind it. Um, it's just another way of looking at the market. So again, if you are a subscriber, that will be in tomorrow's edition, the Wednesday edition of our Earnings Beats Digest newsletter. So make sure you uh, put in your name, email address, hit that subscribe button. All right, uh, daily market recap. Let's take a look at what happened on Monday. You can see the Dow Jones Industrial Average intraday early in the morning was at an all-time high, but that was a pretty big reversal coming all the way back down to test the 20-day moving average by the close. So not very good action to finish the day. And after a lot of sideways consolidation, I don't know, I'm just not feeling very good about this uh, reversal. We are looking at futures that are up though this morning. Um, I would just be careful if we end up moving to a new low. In other words, we gap up and then you see a selling off again. I think short term could be a little dicey if that's the case. S&P 500 lost eight points yesterday. It did not hit an all time high intraday, but it got close was well above 4,400 and then came back down, closed below 4,400. Still sitting above that 20-day uh, EMA. We'll continue to watch that. NASDAQ finished up eight points, but it was up a lot more earlier. Um, still, we are trending above the 20-day, so all still good there. Negative divergence, though, is worth watching. Failure to hold on to the 20. And I think we could quickly see 14,250, which is a 400-point drop from where we are right now. I don't think that would do any... Uh, serious technical damage, but it would help to relieve the PPO and maybe a little bit of an overbought condition. Mid caps down uh, almost 12 points yesterday. And again, you can see the big long tail to the upside. So we were trading intraday on the S&P 400 mid cap index up near the 2750 level, but we closed at 2692, pretty big reversal. Small caps, the S&P 600 small cap index was trading above its 50-day moving average for the first time since early uh, July, and we were unable to sustain it. Ended up finishing back down near that 20-day moving average, almost sitting right on that 20-day. So 
not a very good finish to the day yesterday. I think that's pretty clear. Uh, utilities led the action yesterday up about three quarters of 1%, trying to get back up through that 67 area. Discretionary stocks also performed well, up a little bit more than a quarter of 1%. Uh, still got some work to do, trying to break out, got to get through 185. Uh, Amazon did a lot of damage to the XLY on Friday of last week. So even though we did bounce back a little bit, uh, there is more room to the upside, more work to be done there. Materials do not like that reversing candle on the 50 day at all. That is a bearish engulfing candle off of this uptrend. I think materials may have seen a top for a while based on that candle. So if we can get back up clear 85, 85 and a quarter, that would negate that bearish candle. But without doing so, uh, I would expect materials to see downside action in the near term. Energy also tried to get through the 20 day moving average, failed, closed down at the low. I feel similarly with energy. I will be surprised if we can get back up through, say, 50, 80, 51, something that range. Uh, instead, I would be looking for energy to roll back over, maybe head back down, test that 46 area, maybe put in a positive divergence as we approach key support at 46. Um, finally, industrials, very weak as well. Looked like we had a breakout there, came back down, reversal, bearish engulfing candle. I don't know, just some of these candles, the way we finished yesterday just didn't feel very good. So I know we're looking at futures that are up a little bit this morning, but just be a little cautious, especially if we turn uh, red uh, after the open. All right, uh, let's move on to the 10-year treasury yield. Uh, not really much out in the way of economic reports today. We do have June factory orders coming in later this morning at 10 a.m. The estimate there is for a rise of 8 tenths of 1%. May, we saw a rise of 1.7%. So still looking for positive uh, factory orders there, but uh, down from what we saw in May. Looking at the chart, uh, really the same as what we've been looking at recently. I mean, we're still downtrending in the yield below that 20 day, which is below the 50 day, everything's falling. Um, we're now testing the recent low, just below that 120 level. Uh, if we have another down day today, I, it certainly looks like odds are pointing to maybe a test of 1%. And I'd really, I think the market's gonna get spooked. I think the equity market will get spooked if that 10 year treasury yield drops back below 1%. So let's keep an eye on it. Again, we are in the summertime, August, September, not always the greatest. So uh, got to be ready for just about anything as we look out over the next uh, several weeks. All right, moving on to talking technically. So I wanted to talk about a couple of groups, um, semiconductors and software, which have been performing pretty well. You can see Semiconductors over the last couple of weeks since mid-July really made a nice move from just below 7,000 to take out the all-time high yesterday. Didn't close above it, but we did on an intraday basis get up to almost 7,700, closing just below 7,600. I did not like that finish. We had a lot of volume on the way up, and unless we can take out that high from Monday, 76, 82, 89, until we can take that high out, I would be a little bit more cautious with the semis because that is a failed breakout and many times that will mark a top. So we just wanna be careful. I wouldn't be surprised off this uptrend to see maybe an ascending triangle where we have equal highs and then rising lows. So maybe a trip back down to 7,200, 7,400, I wouldn't be surprised in the near term. Again, let's watch to see if the market turns negative after having some green futures. The other uh, industry, or yeah, other industry group that I thought is interesting in technology, I wanted to take a look at software. Software has made a big run since back in May. This has been one of the best performers over the last two months. So we've gone from under 4,500 to almost 5,500 in 10 weeks. So really, really solid action in software, but higher prices lower PPO, negative divergence. This is one, if it drops below 5,300, if it goes below that 20 day and back below the recent um, breakout, which would be support, then I think we're looking at possibly going all the way back down to test that 50 day moving average. So even semiconductors and software, two areas that have been leading the market with the reversal yesterday, both of these I think are still subject 
to some selling. Now, I do think the market will recover if we see the selling, but I'm just talking about very, very near term. There are some, uh, some signals to watch pretty closely because we could see selling accelerate. All right, um, let's move on to seasonality. So I talked a little bit over to earnings beats yesterday during Trading Places Live about the XLK and the fact that technology really likes the month of August. It's one of it. Actually, I think it is. It's the best month over the last 10 years. It's been the best month of outperformance of technology. So I'm talking about technology, the XLK relative to the S&P 500. And that's how I'm showing the XLY here. So relative to the S&P 500, the XLY has gone up seven of the last 10 years. Uh, it's outperformed, I should say, the S&P 500 seven of the last 10 years. And the average outperformance has been 0.6%. Now that's not the best month, but it's a good month. So when you look, you can see, you know, obviously November was better. April's the best on, you know, on record for the year where we see the XLY average outperforming the S&P 500 by about 1.3 percentage points. January is one full percentage point. So August is a good month, but it's not, it's not the uh, best month. Um, still worth mentioning though, a couple of areas within the uh, consumer discretionary space that I wanted to mention. The first is home improvements. So home improvements tend to uh, like the month of August. So if we go back again, these 10 years, you can see August, the outperformance in home improvements relative to the S&P 500, 2.9 percentage points on average in the month of August. That is the best of the year. Now it's only outperformed 60% of Augusts. So it's like when it happens, there tends to be a lot of outperformance, but it's not a slam dunk to happen every August. So just a group to keep an eye on. Um, I'll give you a stock or two in just a minute that uh, you may wanna watch. Another area within the consumer discretionary, this one doesn't beat the S&P very often, but again, the amount of, the, you know, the extent of the beat is pretty substantial. So August, you can see here, and this is autos versus the S&P 500. Over the last 10 years, autos have, have beaten the S&P 500 50-50. It's 50, you know, it's coin toss. But the average outperformance is almost five percentage points in August. So when this group moves in August, it moves. We saw Tesla yesterday, yesterday break out above $700. Uh, which is kind of a big breakout. To me, it's breaking out of a triangle, which I think is a bullish development. I'm expecting Tesla to continue to run higher. And this is a seasonality chart that would support that notion. All right. Um, let me show you a couple of charts here. So the first one here, this is Lowe's. So this is a home improvement re retailer. I wanted to show you Lowe's relative to the S&P 500. Over the last 10 years, it has beaten the S&P 500 seven of those 10 years during the month of August and has averaged beating the S&P 500 by almost four percentage points <clears throat> per August. So this is in one of those groups that tends to be strong and Lowe's tends to be strong as well. And Lowe's is on our top 20, I believe, our top 20 list uh, versus the S&P 500. Um, Home Depot, let's pull up Home Depot and check this one out. Over the last 10 years, it's gone up versus the S&P 500, 60% of Augusts, and to the tune of an average outperforming or outperformance of 2.9 percentage points. So Home Depot, Lowe's, both tend to perform pretty well during the month of August. So keep those in mind as you're looking for potential trades this month. Um, and also just to mention again, Anybody who is a free Earnings Beats Digest uh, subscriber, and you go to our homepage, earningsbeats.com, uh, type in your name, email address, hit that subscribe. All, everybody that's on this list as of tomorrow morning is going to get a copy of our seasonality chart list. That's typically reserved for members, but tomorrow we're going to give you a, kind of a sneak preview of just one piece of our service and what we do. So make sure you're subscribed 
to our newsletter and uh, you'll have a link for that uh, chart list tomorrow in the EB Digest. All right, let's move on to chart lists. <clears throat> and really what I wanted to show you here, I wanted to go through, this is another uh, part of our service. This is the short squeeze chart list that we do. We update this usually twice a month. <clears throat> and the way we set this chart list up is we have it numbered. Um, all the companies that have um, short percentage of float over 20% are put on this list. So just by having this one list, you have all, most of the companies are uh, the heavily shorted companies anyway, all in one chart list, which is pretty cool. And I'll show you how you can, uh, uh, you know, kind of monitor this in just a second. But the title of each one, I have the percentage. So the short percentage of float is listed in the title. And so the, the heaviest one listed right now is uh, FUV, which is a, um, has 37.26% uh, short percentage of float. Now this stock saw volume increasing yesterday. It looked like we had a breakout. This would have been pretty important. And we'll see whether or not maybe we can get one today, but that was a false breakout. I'd be careful on these short stocks when you have false breakouts, because it could be that there are still a lot of folks trying to short it, maybe even institutions trying to short it and market makers are accumulating you know, getting a, a lot of folks to buy these false breakouts and then market makers can short driving the price back down and then uh, developing these short positions for their institutional clients. It's just one possibility. I mean, I don't work for a market maker. I couldn't tell you uh, what institutions are doing with this stock right now, uh, but you just have to be careful when you do get these false breakouts like this. Um, but the thing that I like about this chart list and all of our chart list, one neat feature at stock charts is you can hit this view all, and then under the view list as, change that to summary. And so it quickly can identify on an intraday basis, which of these stocks are moving. So you can do this intraday. I mean, you can be doing this at 9.45 in the morning, first 15 minutes of the day, you can get a sense, is there anything going on with this short squeeze chart list? And then pull up the chart, see what the volume looks like in the first 15, 30 minutes. If it's already 50% of average volume, then you know you, you might have something in terms of a short squeeze. Um, and then the other thing is you want to see if these stocks are actually breaking out. So here was uh, KDMN. This thing has been a yo-yo. And these short squeeze stocks, by the way, are very aggressive. So if you're risk averse, you probably just want to stay away. But if you're somebody who, who looks for what could be a powerful move to the upside, you're looking for a major return on your money, some of these short squeeze charts uh, can work out really well for you. But obviously, you've got to be willing to take that downside risk on these false breakouts. I mean, you can see KDMN went from $3.50 to $4.90 in one day. Two days later, it's back down to $3.75. And then two days later, back at $4.40. Four days, a week later, back to 375. Now it's right back up, hit 440 yesterday, 438. So you can kind of get an idea, the sense of the uh, significant um, volatility here. The volume has been picking up though, and it is trying to make a breakout. If we get up back up through this 440 level and can close above that level, it'll put all of those who have been shorting this stock any time over the last four months underwater on their trade. And that's what you're looking for in a short squeeze. So KDMN, I think, looks, looks very interesting to me. Um, VXRT, another one that made a move yesterday. But see, this one moved and it's not really making a breakout. So still got more work to do. I mean, this isn't, if you're shorting the stock and you shorted it up above the current price, you're going to have no pressure to cover, to buy. And that's the whole idea with a short squeeze. You're looking for that pressure to be applied to anybody who's shorting the stock. RVP is one that I own. We'll see what happens. Um, but this one actually did make the breakout yesterday. You can see the volume starting to accelerate. So this is one to at least keep on your radar uh, for Tuesday to see whether or not it'll extend uh, this move to the upside. 
you want to just continue to see higher highs and higher lows going in. As that happens, that will eventually, if it doesn't put pressure on shorts today or tomorrow, it will by Thursday or Friday. If you keep going higher and higher, more and more shorts will cover. Volume will eventually pick up, and then you could have a nice short squeeze underway. So watch to see if we can keep putting in higher highs, higher lows. All right, uh, let's move on to uh, the earnings spotlight. All right, so looking at last night's earnings. So these are uh, companies that reported after the bell on Monday. Just looking at a few of them that maybe, uh, looks like we're gonna see some pretty good opens on. Let's start off with Solar Edge Technologies. So Solar Edge yesterday closed at 257. Uh, down a buck 76. It's been sideways consolidating here. Well, they came up with their earnings, which beat estimates uh, pretty handily, a buck 28 versus a buck 12. And the stock in after hours was up over 10%. So up about $26 to maybe around the 283 area. And I would be watching 287 is where we topped in terms of an open. So the highest candle body the last three months, 287. And pre-market, uh, it looks like Solar Edge uh, could be up getting close to threatening that level. Um, now, if you open below that 287 level over here, move up intraday and then come back down below it, that could be a signal for a further sell-off. Remember, most stocks that gap up will eventually go back and fill their gap. Some don't, but the majority will. And so what Solar Edge does after it opens today is going to help to dictate whether or not we see this pullback and in, in a gap fill. So let's see how it opens, see whether it makes a breakout or tries to make a breakout above that June high, and then see if it fails. If it goes up, fails, comes back down, that could be a, an interesting entry point on the short side if you're inclined to short. I typically will not short during what I think is a secular bull market um, or a secular bull market advance. But, you know, to, he, to each his or her own. I mean, if you want to short, uh, you can make money shorting by all means. All right, other um, earnings. Now, this is not the Zoom that I normally talk about, but ZI, which is Zoom Info Technologies, not Zoom Video conferencing, but Zoom Info Technologies, um, they beat 14 cents versus 12 cents, and they're, they were up 11.5% last time I looked. So looking like we're going to get a big breakout above the February high, and that AD line's been strong. So got a, you know, multiple signals here that look pretty strong on ZI, so I would be expecting uh, after the gap up, even if we do pull back short term, I think eventually we're going to see higher prices ahead on ZI. All right, let's see what missed um, or what didn't fare so well in terms of market reaction. How about Take Two Interactive? Uh, take Two TTWO, they actually beat bottom line buck seven versus 93 cents, but stocks down 4%. Market not impressed with what's going on here. It's been in a downtrend. Certainly seems like it wants to go down and test this double bottom, possibly put in a triple bottom. We got about $11 or so to get there. Um, not gonna get that on the open, but uh, could be on our way. I mean, it looks like maybe seven bucks, something like that at the opening bell. All right. Um, let's see another stock uh, that reported and was getting a pretty positive response was COLM, which is Columbia Sportswear. So the stock had been you know, moving down, but started to turn back up. AD lines remained pretty strong. Um, so that's, that can be a pretty good signal. Their bottom line, 61 cents. The market was expecting a loss of 12 cents. That's a big beat. Um, stock being rewarded is up 4.5% after hours or pre-market hours. So it looks like we're probably gonna be up close to that 105 level at the open. Based on where we're trading now, things could change as we get closer to today's open. 
All right, how about Mosaic, MOS? All right, so this one's in the material space and we had a big reversal in materials yesterday. So I'm a little nervous about the group. Mosaic is up 4% pre-market. Um, they beat $1.17 versus $1.01. Uh, so we'll see what happens after the open, but at least at the open, we're going to be up closer to um, that 50 day moving average again, but essentially erasing the losses that we saw yesterday. Uh, what we don't want to do is see another sell off uh, similar to the one we saw yesterday intraday. All right. Um, we're going to do it. Now let's do one more maybe before we get into the three you must see. Um, well, actually let's do one more from last night, which uh, NXPI. So this was the largest market cap that reported last night after the bell. NXP Semiconductor. And you can see the false breakout there. Double top, looked like we were trying to make a breakout. AD line looks good. They beat 238 versus 231, stock down 1% pre-market. So I think we have a chance to go down and test these moving averages, but I do believe this is a stock that's going to eventually make this breakout. It's just whether or not the overall market, um, you know, continues to pull back like it did yesterday afternoon, or do we erase that and move to new highs? I think that will uh, dictate quite a bit what goes on with these semiconductors. All right, uh, let's wrap this up. The three you must see. I'm going to start off with TDS. These are all three companies that struggled yesterday. Um, the first one, TDS. Uh, if you go back and you take a look at June, so right in here, you can see we had higher prices. Um, this chart does not show the PPO, but I'm going to pull up a different chart so you can see the PPO. Higher prices, PPO is lower. Negative divergence. Now, this negative divergence signaled what appears now to be the start of a downtrend. That is not always the case. I don't, when I see a negative divergence, I don't immediately think, okay, we're gonna have this huge decline. Normally what I'm looking at is just a pause in the uptrend. See a negative divergence, work your way back down to the 50 day, maybe even a little bit below. The uh, PPO goes back to the center line and then you reverse back to the upside. That's what I normally look for, especially in a bull market. That is not the case here. Sometimes the negative divergence will mark a top, whether it's the market or just an individual stock. In this case, it looks to me like TDS is now resuming that original downtrend. So we had a move down, a little bit of a flag, breakdown below the flag. Notice the gap down, the open came below the prior high, or excuse me, the prior low candle body. So that was a signal, in my opinion, that the stock was going to sell off, and it did. Um, I think it's got a chance to go all the way back down here to this double bottom, uh, down at the 17 and a half level. So until I see something reversing candle, positive divergence, well, technically there is a positive divergence, lower prices, higher PPO, but this is going to start to accelerate. And the other thing is I, if I see a negative divergence, or excuse me, a positive divergence, but a breakdown on heavy volume, price volume trumps divergences, in my opinion. So if I get a heavy volume breakdown, I don't care what the divergence is. Now, if we you know, move down, move back up again, move down one more time, and the volume settles down, we have a positive divergence, to me, that would be a different story. All right, I'm um, going to have to go through these last two really quickly. Um, the first one is GPN. Just wanted to show you the huge sell-off yesterday. I would absolutely stay away from a stock that sells off on that kind of volume. And then the final one is ENPH. Enphase, like I mentioned, solar edge gapping up today. You can see Enphase uh, gapped up, tried to make a breakout, and then came back down. Let's see what happens with Solar Edge later this morning. All right, uh, everybody have a great day. I'll be back on Wednesday over at Earnings Beats for your next Trading Places Live. Happy trading, everybody.
Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment, and if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.